huge fan of the property. And probably can see it through the tissue paper. It is so oh, got it upside down. Soul of Choco King, Choco King, Choco King, how you say it, Voltron, and this box is heavy, it's pretty sweet. Here is the box, it was one time I thought I would never own this dang on thing. Uh, at first I thought it wasn't worth getting until a, a, a guy had it open on display at a local toy show, and I was like, oh, I should have got it. Uh, and like I said, then it went up in price, so I was like, oh... Like, so you probably never want to take my advice on when to buy a toy and when not to buy a toy. Because I don't know. I can't call it. I think it's in some type of slip cover. Let's take a look at the slip cover. Uh, Voltron right there. I believe that's a shot of the actual toy itself. Um, back of the box, Voltron and all the stuff he can do. Side of the box, individual lions. Over here, Voltron. Top of the box, gold foil. Printing right there. Get it upside down. Uh, can't see. I oh, know I had it right the first time. Right there. It says Voltron, Defender of the Universe. On uh, top and the bottom. So I'm going to slide it out. Uh, and let's take a look. There's uh, some more pictures of Voltron. Actual toy on the front and the back. So, like, I mean. They're making sure you don't need instructions because that's everything you need to see and do right there. And so I am going to get inside this packaging because I have waited long enough. We're just going to check it out. Just going to check it out briefly like we just did for Predator King. See what's in the box. Uh, nothing further in the box. We got a couple trays on the top. Here are some weapons. The weapons they like, um, you gotta be super die hard to know what they do. Like I know what they do. I'm not super die hard, but I, I know what they do because I do remember that long memory. Um extra faceplate in there, right there. And the staff of spear he makes that he very used reused it rarely. And the stand you need to assemble. To put the weapons on we have an instruction booklet right here for Voltron pretty thick and plastic cover and now we're down to the lions um black lion black lion oh first here he is in the packaging and all oh, that die cast is heavy oh the chrome is chromy chromy goodness Oh, he is pretty darn cool. Um, let's go for the yellow lion. Your lion head is off. That's not good. Especially since he's been sitting in the box for a month. I don't think Big Bad want to hear that about returns. But I see the peg on there and it comes off. But anyway, it, it pegs back on there. The peg is in there. It pegs back on there. I'm not... Let's get this guy back in his resting place. Blue lion. Out of the box, resting at the ocean floor, or was in the lake? I don't know. Red lion. Everyone's least favorite. I know it's one or two people out there like I like. <laughs> Everyone's least favorite. The green lion. The chrome. We get is blazing sword, and it is a correct, proper blazing sword. With the corrected handle that we hardly ever ever see in any has the gold tinge to it. So that is that. Just wanted to check it out in this video. Get something extra, and that is all I see from this figure. Okay, moving on from the previously recorded unboxing segment that came from another video. Um, we checked out the instruction booklet. And besides the lions, the contents of the box are the individual lions' weapons and face. We're going to get these unboxed. But you know what? First, I'm going to start with the stand so we can put the weapons on the stand. And there you have 
have the weapon stand. And also, um, there's a logo to go right here, and we'll get to that in one second. But let's take a look at the stand itself. You can see like a, a archway or a doorway where this is actually supposed to be. Um, put you in mind of the castle. I don't know if it's actually supposed to be the castle because it looks like Lion's Castle, but with the brick design in there. All right, next up are the actual weapons. And took a look at that real briefly when I was unboxing in a previous video. You get a choice of Soul of Joko King or Voltron. Or is this Go Lion? I think this is uh, Beast Go Lion actually in Voltron because I barely know what this is and what it's supposed to say. We're going to go with Voltron and just tab it in here and it just presses in there. We have that. Then we have the individual weapons. We'll start from the top left and work to my right. individual weapons daggers are not chrome they're color coordinated to each individual line but they're individually sealed in a baggie and it's just silver paint now it seemed like they would have sealed each one of these weapons in the sword and individual individual baggie but it was just kind of half sheathed in plastic but they took more care for the non-chrome weapons which i don't understand let me get these open Now we come to the heart of this set, the actual lions themselves, and have them in a seated positioning because this is one of the big uh, whoop de doos or draws to this set that it was like the most accurate to the cartoon and most faithful to the original toys that can actually sit on their butts. Now they don't sit down as well as the animation model. Cause they set really low and the neck would sit like really high up and the heads will look just straight forward. This is as straight forward as I can get the head and neck on the blue lion. And same thing goes for the smaller ones. They would like sit down and the body would be up kind of high and the head would be forward in this position and you really can't get that but this is as close as you can get. All right, let's get started with individual lions breakdown. And I'm gonna start with the black lion. I'm gonna bring him closer. He looks fantastic. Love the sculpting of his head. Uh, his mouth articulates. He has very sharp teeth in his mouth. And it is truly an adult collectible. A little bit of detail in his mouth. He has a missile in his mouth. It is unpainted. It is just gray plastic. The missile does not articulate unlike a few of the other lions. And it is not removable. Um, let's take a look at the articulation while we're at it. The neck, 360s at the shoulder hinge. It also extends more to give you a better range of motion. The head itself doesn't really have side to side, but it's sides to sides at the neck so you can get that much out of it. He can look down that much, which is a lot. And not up very much. Um, you get it out of the neck and not the head. Moving on to the shoulders of Voltron. Both show all the lines extend to get more dynamic posing in both modes, both Voltron mode and line, individual lion mode. 
You get a complete 360. You can extend it 360. You bring it in 360 right there. There's no elbow swivel on the front paws. They just bend at the elbow up this far on this line, back this far on this line, uh, coming down to the paw articulation. The paw 360s, you can get some side to side out of it. And again, it comes all the way back this far and, and to the front this far. And the chrome parts down here are die cast in the forearms, but the paw themselves are plastic, vac metal, and chrome. And I know this especially because on my black line, I am missing some chrome right here. This is the only paint defect I've seen across all five lions. I don't know how that occurred in the box, uh, rubbing up and down or something like that. Or, or I don't know, shipping. I just hope it doesn't continue to flake off. In search of more articulation, his waist. Get these out of the way. I, I guess wait, the wings <laughs> Articulate on this bag. You can move these around for Voltron mode. This they have the same articulation or as ninety percent of the Voltrons in the history of Voltron. They come up, they bend right here. But we'll talk about that more in robot mode. But the waist, he has some side to side in his waist right there. It's kind of hindered because there's not much of a gap there, and you can separate it. And I believe this is for Voltron mode, and you can get a little bit more of it, but not a lot. You get a little bit more side to side. It does not, well, it has a little bit of rotation in there, but again, it's, it's hitting on the belt buckle right here. And we'll go over that again in Voltron mode. And this entire portion from the belt area back here to the black in the butt area is all die cast, making them very, very hefty. The die cast even runs through the plastic, creating this hinge in here, which is very, very nice. I'm um, this hinge allows him to sit down and have different poses in lion mode when he's sitting on his butt. We showed that off earlier. Um, the tail right here, while we're up here, it folds up for Voltron mode. It also comes back. You can move it like this. It has a ball joint right there, 360 right here. This separate little tail piece. You probably could pop it off if you want to, but why would you want to? Um, and there's not much else going on in the hip area, but you come down to the thigh. You get a little bit of rotation. Seems like they would have had more in here, but this is all you get in and out and then coming down to the elbow bend it comes all the way back because he can sit down and, and do all of that stuff you can get it this far and it comes forward this far uh, and coming to his rear paw it has some side to side rocking on that ball joint 360 it comes up this far which is a lot <laughs> you won't even never need that but it comes back this far and unlike all the other lines the waist the hips right here don't separate like the front. They don't pop out any further. I guess that's designed to handle the Voltron mode. And now I'm going to get this guy weaponized. Main weapons. We're going to start with the dagger. Here it is. Looks fantastic. It's well done. You open up his mouth. Unlike the other lions, Voltron does not have a peg. You just kind of get it in behind the teeth and close the mouth. And there you have it. Daggers in his mouth. Then he has these two cannons. They go on either side of his shoulders. I believe now there is no really wrong way to do it I guess well maybe <laughs> yeah the length of the cannon should stick out further this way but you can pop these on either side of the lion and he looks fantastic and you can actually pretend like he's firing yeah and there you have it this is black lion weaponized mode all right, moving on to the red and green line. I'm doing both at the same time because they're like uh, almost twins. They Clearly, they've always had a different body design, but they're pretty damn close. And I'm going to go with the red line because he's my second favorite line. So um, oh, well, let, let me point out the differences real quick. Um, basically, you have a circle peg over here, and all his legs have like the little slotted thing at the top. So um, that is different, but the legs are basically built or engineered on the same design or whatever same thing with the bodies this is going to be the same articulation for both of the figures so just red line here he is golden eyes uh silver snout you can open up his mouth uh, the same sharp teeth follow over here it reveals twin cannons right here these actually have a name i actually know the name but it slips me now that i want to say it they articulate in his mouth and go up and down it can rest at the base of his mouth and there you have that. Uh, and a rarity on Voltron figures, he actually has a neck. They both do. But you can uh, shorten it to kind of make him look like the vintage one where there is no neck. But, and again, the paint looks great. It's not a lot. It's mostly red plastic. You got the silver paint, a little bit of gold. Um, 
and this is what you have. The legs again are die cast except for when you get down to the paw. You get the plastic out of there. He has a die cast hinge in here in the middle of his waist or body. It extends. You can see the die cast. I don't think this is die cast right here. And I guess this is to articulate him in Voltron mode more fully. And you can use it in both modes. All articulation, it still works in both modes without looking goofy or silly. So let's do articulation. We already had the neck and head extend. Um, the head rotates at that same hinge. We can get some side to side out of it. Not a whole lot, but that's enough. Some up and some down. Um, coming to the shoulders. Again, all the shoulders go in and out, separate. Has the hinge. You can come down like this and do this. Wider stance. Elbow bend. And again, this is the same articulation, most of it, except for the shoulders. From every Voltron ever is going to do this because the cats do this. Except for the uh, Panache Place version. That thing had no articulation. This trash is the most trash Voltron of all time. Yeah, I said it. If you love it, so what? <laughs> I said it anyway. And, you know, like the, the legs, they're going to move all around because they have to fold up for Voltron mode. Dun, 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 dun. Like that, so... You're going you're gonna to have that, and we went over the waist, get a complete 360 out of that. Um, it crunches and everything, and the back legs, unlike the black line, the back legs have this extension on them. And you got the same articulation that follows through for both. You got this die cast hinge piece that plugs in for dun, 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 dun. Voltron mode. But it is part of the tail, so we get that articulation out of that. It comes down to the main tail. It's on a little ball joint. You have to watch out for this thing because while I was posing for some pictures, this thing shot off and I actually lost it. If you push down on it the wrong way, uh, you saw that it, it shoots. And it, it took me like a whole day <laughs> to find where this little piece went. So watch out for that. And you don't want to keep stressing it and stretch it out where it no longer fits on this um, die cast ball joint right there and that is the articulation pretty much of both lions and um here is the little play feature in this it's weaponized the back opens up to reveal this weapon right here i can't remember what type of cannon it is i think it shot lava or something like that out of it and his arm mate his limb mate over here has the same feature but a different design completely different design and i do like that how even originally, they made each lion different. They're built similar, but they are different. It's not the same recycled stuff. And that paint, there's some silver paint in there. It's done well. The little paint that is there is done well. Some parts aren't painted like down in there, a little gray part. But All right, now to get these guys weaponized, since I spent so much time on the red lion, I'm going to get the green lion weaponized first. Going to take his dagger right here and stick it in the roof of his mouth. There is a slot for this port right here, a port for the pig. Just slide that in the roof of his mouth and it sticks in without even closing the mouth and you just do that right there. Then he has this spinning disc thing. Now you can't plug the weapons into each other because they're specifically designed to go on each line. Specifically you can put them on either side of the shoulders but I think they're meant to go a specific way and I'm going to put them in the way that they're designed to go in right now. And there you have it. And once in the lion's arms, they actually articulate. This one looks kind of hard. It's supposed to spin. But since these are not very hard, they're a little soft. I don't want to break them all trying to rotate this. But um, this actually rotates over here. Alright, moving on to the blue and the yellow lion, the legs of the group, and I'm going to start with the blue lion. I'm mostly going to use the blue lion because this is my favorite of the two, and you're going to have to deal with that again here. And take a look at his face. He has the golden eyes as well. Silver pen on the face. It's, it's the standard stuff if you ever had a Voltron, but the biggest difference is the build quality and the articulation that goes into these figures. I'm gonna open up his mouth real quick. He has like that same this might be the same missile, it's slightly different than Black Lion's missile. He has some paint apps inside of his mouth. It is like uh, a metallic blue in there, gunmetal blue. I don't know what to call it. Uh, super sharp teeth, different teeth than the other lions. And they are very nicely done. If you snag them on something, you can break it out of there and would be in trouble at that point. But the mouth opens and closes. The neck on these guys do not extend like the other lions, but they do detach. And you can get that firing motion. That rock His head uh, 
move side to side like this. You got some down. Not a whole lot of down out of the blue line, which I'm kind of down on. You can look up that far, which is pretty far. And you can move this part of the neck because of the transformation in the Voltron. And then again, we have the shoulders again that extend in and out. And these are actually on a spring. And the same, you're going to get the same articulation that you expect because it folds up and becomes Voltron. Uh, uh, dun, 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 dun. So you're going to get that. And that goes for front and back. And not a whole lot of articulation like the other lines, but he does have like this waist pivot. It is not a lot. No rotation here, which is kind of like, eh, that's what you get coming to his tail. It's one piece on this single hinge and it's on a little ball joint. 360 folds up, bam, bam. Uh, then he has his individual weapon that launches out of his back. And he actually has a, a separate paint. He has a silver paint out. And then that blue, that metallic blue that's in the mouth right there on this part. And I'm going to jump over to the yellow line. And the yellow line is the only one that doesn't have golden eyes. And I'm assuming that's because the gold would clash with the yellow on his head. But he has the cannon on his back. He's the only one of the four lion limbs that weapon does not pop out out of the secret space. It just sits here the whole time. And again, the number goes right there that I haven't put on. So I'm going to get these guys weaponized. the same old trick. So I'm going to weaponize these guys and come right back. Here they are all weaponized and they look fantastic. And I do know Voltron has come with the weapons in the past, different versions of Voltron. I happen to have two other versions in my collection that will make an appearance today. But these guys look fantastic. Not a whole lot of paint apps on the weapons for the uh, weaponized mode other than the daggers. But um, I don't think there was a lot of paint apps on these things on a cartoon. All right, just let me say, these lions are very, very impressive compared to the original Matchbox, the reissue of the original Matchbox, the Tonami 20th anniversary and 30th anniversary versions of the Voltron Lion set. In lion mode, I would be very, very tempted to display these guys as just the lions. They look just that good. Weaponized, unweaponized, they look fantastic. And I think they look better than any lion set I've ever seen. All right, now for the good part. The moment where any combiner is predicated on is the combined form. And I'm going to start with the legs first. Get these guys out of here. Start with the blue line. If you've ever seen a cartoon, you should know how to merge these figures, whether you own them as a kid or not. Um, bring the head forward. And we'll tuck away the legs. And you just get it into like almost a foot leg boot position like this fold away the back legs I believe just like this or maybe yeah these guys go right here around this side bam and here we have it. but we have a stabilizer right here it is made out of die cast metal and it comes around back here and it helps the leg figure Voltron stand better I got it correctly, and you can put these on the ground and give them a little bit more stabilization. The hind legs, oh, and we put the tail away right there. And there we have one leg, and we come over here and repeat the beat. And there we have it, two legs done. Oh, and we pop these in as well. They snap in. Next up are the arms. Same thing exactly like the cartoon only thing with the legs on the arm once they folded up on a cartoon they just miraculously disappeared and were gone there's a new voltron out i can't think of the name of it right now but um they have covers to cover these up to make them truly animation accurate and we're going to fold down the tail to get it ready to merge and there we go same thing with the green line and here we go green line Okay, now for the black lion, we're going to fold the front paws up first. Got to open these little compartments. I don't know if they show these compartments on a cartoon open. But they show the legs fold away. Oops. Right there, and we close the doors on the legs. Just like that, come down to the rear legs. We just straighten these out at anatomical human legs as possible with the paws facing down 
Then we rotate the legs around to line up the red part right here. I always wonder was this a V for Voltron, like, like this, or whatever. And on a cartoon, these things would just disappear. They're like they would like light up and disappear instead of just sticking out the back. Um, all right, I'm gonna grab the blue line and I'm gonna open this. I'm not sure if you open this or just put it in there, but I'm gonna open this compartment. And then we just take the leg and slot it into here until it locks. Like that. And then we close this compartment up. I believe that's how it works. And we're going to come over here and repeat the beat. Take this leg and slot it in and then lock it up. Now we're going to go for the red line. And on this part right here you have a choice you can attach or detach this little part there have been instances where it comes off inside this little hole right here and it, it comes back out but sometimes it can be a little problematic so they give you the choice to just plug it in or not plug it in um go ahead and plug it in since i lost it already and i'm gonna just snap it in there it is i think it kind of clicks twice come over to this side and do it again and now it's in there, back them up yet again. Fold out the wings now to his back right there. And now we form the head. We open up the mouth, pull down the face, open up the horns. And there we have it. I guess the head kind of snaps down in there a little bit. And now we have Voltron, and you can lock so these pieces don't rotate in this mode. There's a little locking mechanism. I've heard stories of these not working so great like they're supposed to, or in some cases, I think the mileage varies on how well it works to keep the show. Okay, I'm going to try to show you. I didn't have it positioned as well as I could have, and you can hear a loud snap when you get it correct. Like that. We can get that snap. There we go, and it should, yeah. And now it locks into place properly. I forgot one little detail. It looks like he has a little pecker hanging down. We're gonna swing him around and fold up the lion's tail for the black lion right there. And here is Voltron merged. And just to show you how fantastic he looks, he looks well proportioned. The chrome looks amazing. The colors look striking. He looks great everywhere he needs to look great. The head is proportioned, the face is proportioned, the limbs are proportioned, and I don't even have them extended. I can extend the arms more, and I will extend the arms when I take them down and take a closer look and do articulation. Alright, this should be kind of challenging to do articulation to keep this guy in frame. I'm going to bring him closer. We are going to start with his head. His head rotates. It's the same rotation if you... Uh, didn't skip forward, you saw the black lion portion. He can look left to right with that lower opening jaw hitting on the sides of the neck area, and that's all he can get. But he will 360 if you bring it out, or if you extend the neck, it should 360 look all the way around if you wanted to. So that option is in there, but then you get this gap clearly. All right, in the, in the normal position, um, he can get a little bit of a rocker. He can look up as far as you want, but again, you break up the scope if you go up too far. And you can look down right there a little bit coming forward and again if you want to break it up you can get a lot more out of it up and down if you want to break it up and that is that for that portion his arms and shoulders are the same they come out on these joints they should completely 360 they are very tight the green is more tight than the red lion, it even sounds different. Sounds like I'm gonna break it actually. So you can get that. And he has a elbow swivel and an elbow hinge. On both arms getting about that much. I mean this thing, it feels so awesome. I love this thing. Oh, you know what? I didn't extend the arms I got earlier and you can extend the necks of, or the wrists of the two lions so let's see what we can get out of it one problem with all the die cast it keeps pulling this guy down but i want to see how far across his body i can get the arms and that's pretty good because he would like cross his arms and go into like this whole little 
battle motion poses or whatever so we can get that and coming down to his hands which are the lion's head we get the 360 same articulation out of lion mode some wrist hands right there and you can open the mouth which is essentially opening the hands up and closing the hands and let's get his hands up arms up check out his waist oh we didn't bother i didn't bother to extend his waist there we go we got more voltron going on now all right, he can swoop up this far and this far left and right. It's the same coming out of the Voltron Black Lion mode. Let's see if we can get him to crunch. He can crunch a lot. Let's get his arms down, make it look cooler. So he can crunch a lot. And this is a lot of articulation for a figure that never, ever is accompanied by a foe. Um, let's see. He can rock from side to side, which is a lot which is pretty cool his arms up yet again and that little so and the shoulders came loose <laughs> it's supposed to be locking get his leg up this far it is so heavy it's going to come back down and kind of wear that ratchet out but it's a good thing it's die cast his knee bends this far he has that thigh swivel right there we saw in the lion mode and again from the black lion mode the leg can come back this far it i don't think it's going to hold well it holds that position and you can bend the knee back this far and it's coming forward but you can get this much out of it and coming completely forward from the side view you get that much out but it's not going to stay so you really can't use it I, I guess if you are putting this guy down in different positions you can use it like this and it works great i guess it's not meant to be suspended in the air under its own weight but this works great coming down to his foot now uh, the head rotates so you can get a wide stance and keep the lion's heads on the ground you can bring down the paws for extra support while keeping the feet on the ground all right so next we're going to form blazing sword the hands together and And here is Voltron with Blazing Sword in his hand. And I have to pick up the tripod to get the entire sword in the shot. And this is what we got. Huge figure, huge weaponry. It is nice. Can't wait to actually stop the review and play with it. And his next weapon is the Spinning Laser Blade, which everyone uses as a shield. It's mostly a shield. I mean, like, he threw it a few times. I mean, he actually did cut down a lot of robies. But with the handle on it, it's kind of a shield. All right, there he is with the shield in his hand. Now it's blocking everything from this angle because he is so large. But here he is in the air looking total badass. Everything you could imagine from Voltron. The detailed sword looks awesome. He has the cross on the sword right here, oddly enough. But he has the wrenches version of the cross on his chest with the crown and his gold vac metal. All right, the murder death kill doesn't stop there. We have two more weapons or if you plug them together we have one weapon the spear goes from two individual swords to a spear here it is looks very good even though I got like some scraping on mine a little bit Let's see if we can get them into his hand all right now getting it in both hands took a little work but I got it to stay in there but I couldn't get it to pay again and him actually hold on to it um I guess I would say realistically but I got it in there so he can hold it with both hands if you wanted to and get some poses out of there you probably can move it around a little bit more if you wanted to and if you worked at it and of course he can hold the blades individually and do will and look even more badass all right lastly i'm going to take a look at voltron's face and if you wonder why i take a look at it before it's because he has this swappable face and this is kind of the last accessory in the tray so now we're going to swap it out but and standard voltron stuff so let's see if we can get this thing swapped out not sure exactly how to get this thing out maybe I should take a peek at the instructions but there it is it slid out it's on two little pegs that fit into the roof of the mouth or inner head and now we get this uh, supposed to be yelling but look more shocked like oh my god but there we go Voltron has the extra faceplate plugged in and uh, he makes this face all the time. It just looks more goofy, non-animated, or whatever. Just he's like, "Oh no!" And that's about all we got. 
All right, fam, it's time for the size up and the rundown. I'm going to take a look at Solar Jagoken Voltron versus my Toynami 30th anniversary version. And as you can see immediately as I bring it around, the, the Toynami version, while being a solid version of Voltron, I mean, he's mostly die cast, which kind of works against him in the joints area. But it is a great figure, but it is nothing compared to this spectacular Solar Jagoken version of Voltron from Bandai. It is the standard for Voltron, in my opinion, and we'll be replacing this guy on my shelf immediately while... This one has its flaws. It also has its features. Again, I said it, it's mostly die cast, which is impressive alone. If you like that type of thing, the heft and the toy and all the metal, which I do. Um, he also has light up eyes, which is very cool. But what really fails him are the wings on his back. They're just too small, always were too small in comparison to his body. The lion head that encompasses the face is just too big on the Toynami version. The waist doesn't work well. It's mostly the Black Lion's fault. And I don't know if it's due to the fact that they put lights in it. I don't know if that compromised it. But um, it just doesn't work. The Solar Jagoken version just shines out this version. And is the gold standard of Voltrons in my opinion. Alright now let me be fair to the Toynami version. He does come with some awesome features he comes with this display stand which is incredible i'm happy to have this like even if i wind up selling this thing off i'm going to keep the stand and the stand one of his features was this key that um just like in a cartoon that would come off their uniform it, it slots into here if you've never seen it before turns into the key plugs into here Oh, and I just love that. And then it starts to growl and cycle through sounds. And this stand also doubles as weapon storage for the individual lions all the way around. Um, it holds the individual lions weapons. Now, why it doesn't come with all the weapons, it comes with the main weapons we saw the most in the cartoon. And I think it's fantastic. Actually, that's enough. I love getting all the weapons. But I'm not going to plug all that stuff in there and leave that stuff in there all the time. So that was very, very cool. All right, back to the size up and rundown. Here he is with Star Wars 3 and 3 quarter Vintage Collection Emperor Palpatine. Funko Pop Barry Sanders. Super 7's Lord of the Thundercats. McFarlane's DC Multiverse Superman. Marvel Legends Serta. And this is probably the closest thing we'll ever get to a Robies. The Krusty Krab. Wait, what? Transformers Generation 1 Predaking. And last but not least, Netflix Classics Voltron. Alright, before I move on, I want to point out something that I suspected the whole time that I've owned this Netflix Classics Voltron version. It is a blown up mold of Soul of Jagoken. I know you can say, well, one Voltron looks like another Voltron. I mean, it's not the exact same toy, but everything is pretty much taken from here and brought over here blown up dressed down and hollowed out but it, it takes the same dimensions from the head of the black lion just the, sh the shape of it in general um the waist area and on down to the shape of all the lion heads it, it, this is pretty much a, a blown up kitty version of this which all right one thing i wanted to do on camera i want to get my guy stickered up because this is going to be my number one voltron in my collection he's not going nowhere a lot of times in some videos i don't use the stickers but i'm going to sticker this guy up uh, so um on the box it has this the, the one facing the head and the other guys are like reverse or facing away from the head so it goes in here upside down if i can get that and I probably shouldn't be doing it on camera so I get better sticker placement because these seem like really strong stickers. Okay, I had it upside down for a second. Um, instruction book shows you that it goes with the top of the one facing the head of the lion. Where most other Voltron versions, it doesn't go that way. But I'm going to go by this little instruction book, even though I don't use instructions. But <laughs> I'm going to put it on according to instructions. Now for the arms, the red and the green lion. And while I'm doing this, I, I want to talk about an issue with every Voltron. Every Voltron out there, no matter which one is your favorite Voltron, has the exact same flaw. And that is the fact that there is no Robies for Voltron to fight. Like, everybody with their special Voltron in a display case is fighting their IKEA display case. Because there is no one for him to fight. 
and this sticker doesn't quite fit into the like the little cavity it's supposed to go in and wow I could have did that better but I'm doing it on camera so there is number two on the red lion and you would think one of these guys one day would make a row beast I guess you just got to make your own then you see these guys these videos and these posts with their massive there's the number three with these massive Voltron videos where they have like every Voltron there is and the sad thing is it's just a sea of Voltrons there is no monster no row beast to even fight All right, here we go with the number four sticker And last but not least, the number five. These feel like really good quality stickers. I don't quite have these things on as well as they could be. I just wanted to do it on camera. I could have stopped the camera and got it on perfect. But uh, I just wanted to have that natural childlike feel to put them on. And here is my Voltron officially done, stickered, merged, and everything. But yeah, there is no Robies for this guy to fight, ever. So no matter how much you pay for a Voltron, no matter how great it is, how well built it is, how much you love it, even from your childhood, they just never made a Robies for this guy to fight. So and only most people put them next to the Die Rugger version, and that's it. And, and then, you know, they were buddies. They are both Voltron. So, wow. It's just really, really, if Toynami, Bandai, whoever is out there, make a damn Robies. I'm going to wrap it up and I'm going to get out of here. I just want to tell everybody that I love this figure. It is magnificent. It is beyond good. It's the best Voltron in existence in my opinion. I haven't had my hands on the Blitzway version, that uh, six, uh, almost $700 version of Voltron. I almost bought it when I couldn't get this figure. Then they re-released it in September of 2021. I got mine off BigBadToyStar.com. Speaking of re-releases, there's a version of this figure where they've reported breakage in the hips of Voltron or the back legs of the Black Lion. I actually saw a video, I actually commented, asked the guy before I opened mine. I was like, well, which version is it? He really wasn't clear on whether it was the third release. I believe mine is the third release or the fourth release with the broken hips. And, there, and then I found another video where the guy, all he talks about is the broken hips. He doesn't even like review the figure. He opened it up, picked up the Black Lion, and the hips broke. But so far, so good on mine. Again, the only issue I had was some chrome chipping on the front right paw of the Black Lion. Other than that, that's all I got for Thanks for watching another episode of George Reviews. The reviews where every toy has a story.